I would like to talk about uh, four topics with you today. First of all, uh, given one more argument on why we need a green economy, which is uh, a bit overseen, I believe. Uh, then I would also go to why do we need photovoltaics in general. I think we've talked about it. I think I have some more arguments over here. And then I would like to concentrate a bit on what differentiates thin film photovoltaics from crystalline photovoltaics, as we just heard, that's a hot topic there. And then last but not least, I would like to uh, give you a short impression of what Inventux is actually doing here in Berlin. We're located in that, uh, in Marzahn, in the uh, Green Business Park there. Yeah. One argument which is uh, rarely said, which I think is actually quite a big argument for a green economy is, because today our economy is largely dependent on a very, very small number of countries, which is very much dependent on a very, very small number of politicians. Yeah. And I don't want to say these are bad people, I don't want to say these are bad countries, I don't believe in excess of evils or anything. I just want to say, I don't want to be dependent. Yeah. And it's a question of uh, foreign policy and dependencies, whether we want to be dependent on six countries which control 50% of wild oil reserves. And when you look to the other countries which control world oil reserves, these are the countries like the US, like China, like Brazil, which will use any of the oil they have themselves anyways. Yeah? So we are dependent to very small number of countries uh, which are at least far away from being stable democracies what, as we regard uh, stable democracies. Why do we need photovoltaics? That's a big argument, I think, already for photovoltaics. Yeah? But uh, now let's go to the more economic-driven arguments. Yeah? Most people haven't really recognized that this year the photovoltaic industry reached the famous paradigm of grid parity. Yeah? This is the current feed-in tariffs in Germany. Already in the first half year for a large installation, you get only 20, 21 cents per kilowatt hour produced with solar energy. And on the left side, what you see there, is what you, as a private household, pay for per kilowatt hour today, which is already more. And uh, what you see below here is the feed-in tariffs in the second half of the year. There will be another cut in summer. It's not sure yet ever whether it will be 3, 6, 9, 12% cut. But in the second half of 2011, the German PV industry is uh, able to produce photovoltaic energy for less than 20 cents, which is less than people pay today at their private households. Yeah. And you know, we can go cheaper over the next years in Germany, but what is more important to understand is, as you're all aware of, as long as you live in Germany, we don't have that much sun. And when you look at the world, there's a lot of places where you have twice as much sun already today than in Germany, and that means if you are able to export uh, German PV systems to these countries, they can produce energy at right about half the price we can do that in Germany. Yeah. And that means in most of these places where you have 2,000 kilowatt hours, yeah, that's the really yellow areas, you can go down today producing photovoltaic energy at 10 cents. Yeah. And in those orange ones like South Japan, for example, you can go down to 15 cents. And now you're all invited to do the maths. What does this mean? Yeah. When you take a barrel of oil, which costs you today $110, you divide it with 160 liters of oil, which are in this barrel, you come down to a price per liter of oil, which is roughly 70 US dollar cents. Yeah. When you process this to diesel, you have to add another 10 to 15 cents. So you come to a diesel price, which is the current world market price, of roughly 80, 85 cents per liter of diesel. Yeah? Diesel contains, you can look it up, 10 kilowatt hours of energy in total. Yeah? And you, most of you are aware that when you transform it into electricity, you can only get around three to four kilowatt out of it. That's because engines can only have an efficiency grade of somewhere around 30 to 45 degree, uh, 35 percent. Yeah? Uh, so that means already today, when you produce electricity by burning diesel, you have costs of around 20 US dollar cents or 15 euro cents. Yeah. That means already today, in most parts of the world, where in fact a lot of people burn diesel, uh, they can produce solar energy cheaper 
than the diesel they use uh, to produce electricity. Yeah? And the big challenge to come, especially for all those from the investors community, will be help to finance that. Yeah? What, because what people in these countries don't have is a lot of capital to invest in a PV installation where you have all the costs up front in comparison to a diesel generator where you have all the running costs uh, over the time of consumption. Yeah. And uh, so 10 cents is already reality. Yeah. And when you look at the price for energy, I mean, you're all aware of that on the right side, the, price, the red line is the price for coal, the green line is the price for oil, the blue line is the price uh, for gas. The prices for these energy sources have increased by the factor of four or five over the last decade. Yeah? The barrel of oil was around uh, $20 at the, at the end of the 90s, and it's now around 100 yeah? Same for coal. And the funky story is that at the same time, photovoltaic industry reduced by the factor of five. Yeah? And that's why we're now at a point where over the course of the next five years, photovoltaic energy will be a competitive source compared to all other energy sources. Yeah? When you look at levelized cost of energies, I think uh, the colleague just introduced the concept that means how much does it cost to generate electricity from a newly installed plant? Yeah? That's all the costs for the installation, for the interest, and then for, for whatever bur you, you will burn in that uh, plant. Typically, all publications you will find, you see that the levelized cost of energy is today around 8 to 12 cents. Yeah? This means, and this is really the interesting part, already today the photovoltaic industry is able to compete with uh, traditional energy sources. Yeah? Not on the electricity market in Germany, because that's where you have a lot of written off capacity. And if capacity is written off, it's, almost, it's always cheaper. Same counts for PV installations. Yeah? But in the long run, and not just in the long run, also already in the short run, if someone builds a new power plant somewhere in the world where he has enough sun, he will recognize that the cost of electricity generation will be at least 10 cents for him as long as he has a super hydro uh, opportunity somewhere, or a lot of wind. Yeah? But 10 cents is uh, uh, the level, and as I just said, we can already reach 10 cents with the PV industry today in a lot of parts of the world. And that is, I think, the big opportunity for the photovoltaic industry to go to these countries uh, and conquer these markets, instead of uh, running around the latest feed-in tariff in Europe. Yeah? So why do we need thin film photovoltaics? So what, what is introduced here is basically the six big uh, technologies for photovoltaics. That's mono and uh, polycrystalline silicium, that's the traditional technologies, and string ribbon, which is also the traditional, you know, you, you have a cell, which looks like this. It's either blue or black, uh, which produces electricity. And then the orange ones, these are all the thin films. It's CIGS, cadmium, telluride, and silicon thin film. And what you see here is that how much energy you actually need to produce a certain amount of uh, installed power by these technologies. And you see that traditional crystalline technologies need a lot more energy than cadmium, telluride, and silicon thin film. And the same counts for what is the environmental footprint in terms of uh, CO2 emissions from these technologies. And you see the same because that relates to the energy used, that they have a much bigger uh, CO2 footprint. And that is why we believe that thin film has a lot of opportunity to take over uh, the role which is currently inherited by uh, uh, crystalline silicon. Uh, uh, it's a famous study which basically shows the cost development of uh, crystalline, cadmium, telluride, silicium, and CIGS. And what you see here is basically silicium synfilm and cadmium telluride synfilms are the ones which have the biggest uh, outlook to get the cheapest sources of energy here. Crystalline has improved significantly, but when you actually look at the data from the biggest uh, 
uh, Chinese producers, they have very, very, very small and actually decreasing gross margins, which means they are losing profitability. Canadian Solar just did. Yeah. And uh, it is questionable whether they will really be able to keep up uh, reducing their prices as they did over the last three years. Yeah. And now that's a really big argument we have why we believe Synfilm uh, will come back over the course of the next three years. Yeah. Synfilm producers like us, we have a capacity that means our factory can produce 30 megawatt of Synfilm panels a year. Yeah. And with that small capacity, uh, we can reach costs per watt peak of a module, which are around uh, $1.20 per watt peak. Yeah. The Chinese can reach the same price, but they have a capacity which is around 1,000, 1,500 megawatt per year. So they have a much bigger scale already, and where they reach more or less the same cost level than we do. And that's why we are very positive that if we have the opportunity to scale up, we will also have the opportunity to bring down costs uh, to 70 cents, 60 cents, and 50 cents even. And uh, to give the non-PV people uh, a bit of an understanding, when you are able to produce modules at around 70 dollar cents, it means you can install solar, uh, total solar installation at around 1 dollar 50. And when you're able to do that, then you can produce energy for 8 cents, 10 cents in sunny places and, and around 15 cents in, in not so sunny places like, like uh, Germany, yeah. which is fully competitive with any uh, electricity source out there. Okay, last but not least, before we, ping, we are pinged, let me uh, give you five uh, more slides on invent hooks. This is a very interesting study for those interested in Synfilm, by, which is regularly published by the EUPD. Yeah? And it shows all the 150 around Synfilm players in the world. And it differentiates by up here are the established ones, like First Solar, most of you are probably aware of. Yeah? And here are the newcomers, the new technology companies most people are not so much aware of, maybe like a Sonovia, Pexel, Moncada, uh, really newcomers who have just started their business models. And on the left side are companies who are just focusing on price, because we, we personally believe we do that as well, uh, that solar energy is in the long run a commodity. And these are the ones who focus on differentiation, on specialized solutions like solar tubes from Solyndra, or flexible cells from Odasun or Global FlexCell. Yeah. And what you can see here in the solar market, there's First Solar, number one biggest player around. Then you have Kaneka, Mitsubishi Heavy, and Sharp, which are also uh, well known big Japanese players. And then there's uh, Tire 3, which is Inventux, Showa Shell, Schott, and Bosch, who are among the rising stars, uh, hopefully able to pick up with the uh, Japanese players. So what do we actually do? We produce solar modules. That's a Synfilm solar module we produce. Yeah. We have our own uh, IP uh, protected mounting system, which allows us to mount on flat roofs without having to drill any holes into the roof. Uh, we have our own label. They're not produced by ourselves, but by a partner company, inverters and cabling. So we offer the, the, the customer the entire solar system he needs to install uh, its own PV plant. Uh, uh, what are we looking for? We are, in fact, I have to admit that, currently focusing on the European market. We're selling to mainly small companies, not so much the really, really big uh, 100 megawatt huge installations. We're focusing on small companies with, uh, with uh, small installations, small rooftop, where we believe uh, our aim is to bring down the costs of these smaller installations to the same cost levels than the big installations. Yeah, and uh, what's our history? Inventux was founded in 2007 by a small group of people which already worked in the solar industry for, for five to ten years. Uh, then we moved to, to Berlin in, in 2008. Uh, build up the factory, started production in 2009. We ramped up uh, production to the full scale and uh, started to enter the European markets. And uh, in 
2010, we uh, reached break even and uh, reached the full uh, capacity. And uh, now we're looking forward to, be, uh, to continue our success in 2011. Yeah. And then there's uh, my last argument for Inventox. I think it was mentioned by you. Yeah. The modules actually look really, really good. Yeah. We have a, a red dot design award in the installations. I don't know if you can see that on the picture. Uh, you can see some pictures on our homepage. They're nice. Yeah. I admit, although I don't actually care about that, I care about cheap energy, but they also look nice. How much, how much money do you need for the next factory? Uh, because you need to scale more quickly, right? Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, it's a million euro value we need, definitely. Uh, we're how now in the area millions? where we... Uh, it depends on the... Give us a number, be yeah. precise. <laughs> e either two or 15, yeah? For the big factory, 15, or for the small two. And the capacity of the big factory, how many megawatt would it be? That would be then uh, around 120 to 150. Okay. So if you have 15 million to invest, <laughs> uh, talk to this gentleman. 